Good morning, gang. <clears throat> Happy Sunday. So here we go again. I want to talk about a topic that we don't discuss too often here on the channel, but it's something that I think really needs to come into play. And there was a question in last night's live stream that kind of brought this subject to the forefront, plus a couple other things going on in the news. And it's pretty important for us as preppers, and that is our self-defense, okay, our Second Amendment rights. <clears throat> and as you guys all know, okay, the Second Amendment is drastically under attack. It always is, okay? It's not like this is anything new. You know, the, the liberal left wants to take away everybody's right to defend themselves, and the uh, conservative right is like, hell no, <laughs> that ain't happening. All right. Now, I'm going to give you just a, a quick fact. Uh, th this may surprise you, it may not. Of all the personal firearms owned in the world, the United States owns 46% of them. So nearly half of the guns that are, that are owned in, in the world are owned by U.S. citizens. This is a big reason why I say that you know, for the, the World Economic Forum ever to put its communist plans for a world government into play, that the United States must go along with that, okay? And because we're literally the only country that has the ability to defend ourselves on a personal level. I mean, look at Australia right now. I mean, no offense to the Aussies, but one of the most foolish things you guys ever did was give up your guns. Okay. So... There's a lot of talk right now <clears throat> on a Supreme Court case, okay? And this, it's, in case you guys don't know the case, okay? It's the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. And what is going on with this one? This one was just argued in front of the Supreme Court uh, late last week. What is going on with it is... The way New York law is written is that the only way you can get a concealed carry permit is if you can prove that you need a weapon to protect yourself, okay, from an act, actual threat, all right? And as they define it, uh, you know, you're a store owner that uh, has a store in an area that crime runs rampant, or you have a protection order against somebody, okay? Uh, Joe Average, who just wants to own a, own a pistol for his own protection and doesn't have you know, any history with being, you know, either directly or indirectly history with being uh, at a threat of his life, they deny the uh, request. Well, here's the problem with that logic. Okay, <laughs> you know, one of those things I like to use that you know it's not part of the Democrat toolbox. Uh, the first time that I have a threat to my life, I'd like to be able to protect myself because there may not be a second time. You know, it. It's one of those things, it's like, and we, we talk about this all the time, you know, the problem where the police, their hands are tied. I'm sorry, Mr. or Mrs. Smith, we can't help you until a crime has been committed. We don't care if there's some guy walking around your house peering in the window. Until he breaks a window, we can't do anything about it. I, that's, that's silly, okay? But that's the way this law is written. You know, and again, it's what we talk about all the time. The criminals have more rights than the citizens do. You know, it just, again, you look at the southern border, whatever it would be. Well, of course, you have to take into consideration the absolute lunacy on the left. The other day on MSNBC, uh, a... Ju the, a justice correspondent for MSNBC... Justice, okay, law, legal, okay. Ellie Mistel, who works for the nation, 
All right. And The Nation is the oldest continuous, continuously published weekly magazine in the United States. Uh, you know, it's a uber leftist magazine, but it talks about, you know, they discuss progressive political news. This woman had the audacity to say that the reason that white people want to own guns is for no other reason than we want to turn the guns on blacks and have no repercussions against us. No, I don't care. I don't, if the guy beating on my door is white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Arab, whatever it would be, I don't give a shit what color his skin is. Okay. And I think I'm probably pretty much like about, I'd say, 99.9999% of the rest of the public that could care less. If you're a threat to me, I want to be protected. But to completely blow up her idea, there was something that came out of Chicago yesterday. Very interesting here. I don't think anybody disagree with me when I'd say at least the south side of Chicago is a pretty scary place, okay? I mean, every weekend we see 10, 15, 20 people shot in Chicago, all right? And I'm not saying it's black. I'm not saying Hispanic. I'm not saying it's white. I mean, it's across the board who's doing the shooting. So there was a story yesterday about a 77-year-old retired fireman who was out working in his garage, Minding his own business, doing his own thing. This is the way the news report put it, okay? A car pulled up and out jumped a 24-year-old man who demanded the 77 give him all his possessions. The 77-year-old fire, uh, firefighter, retired firefighter, turned around, shot him twice, once in the chest, once in the head. No more 24-year-old, okay? What the news media failed to put out about this was the 24-year-old kid was black. So was the 77-year-old retired firefighter. Self-protection doesn't hold anything. It, it, guns aren't racist. I know for the liberal left, everything is racist. I mean, what color, what kind of bread you buy in the grocery store is based on your race, according to the left. All right. This didn't matter. It was a black guy and a black kid. And what happened? The black kid was trying to rob the black guy. And guess what? The black guy said, no, you're not going to. Boom, boom. I'm in fear for my life. End of story. Done. All right. He's 77 freaking years old. Okay. You know, it's not like he's going to get into a... Uh, fist fight with, with this kid. So, yeah, did what he's supposed to. This is, this is why I say that we need to be protected wherever we go. The New York law, and the Supreme Court better overturn this, because the New York law is stupid. When do you, now granted, this guy didn't need to have a concealed carry permit to be in his garage. He's on his own property. But you never know especially with what's going on in the world right now, when you're going to be driving down the street, sitting at the Walmart parking lot, the grocery store parking lot, sitting in a McDonald's, wherever, and somebody comes in and threatens you either indirectly or directly, okay? You know, sitting in McDonald's and somebody decides to come in and rob the McDonald's, okay? That's an indirect threat, uh, you know. Like the one subscriber told me about her son in the grocery store parking lot when somebody tries to steal his groceries. That is a direct threat. You know, you, if at all possibility, need to be armed and trained. That's the key word. You got to know how to use whatever you're carrying. Okay. It's very important because, yes, you are still responsible for what, whatever you do. All right, and I'll give you this as an example. This 77 year old guy, he takes down the 24 year old kid. Absolutely, I don't think 
I, I don't know any of the facts on it, but I think they'll do a short investigation and the guy will be, it'll be determined justified and the guy will never see anything of it. No arrest, no court, no nothing. All right. However, if he wasn't trained, let's say he went pop pop and missed the 24 year old kid, but the bullet went on into the next house over and hit a 16 year old kid playing video games. Now you have a problem. Okay. You are responsible for wherever that bullet goes. You need to be well trained to use your weaponry. You need to know how to shoot it. You need to know how to aim it. You need to know how to hit your target. You need to know what you're shooting. Okay, you're not going to take a 50 cal and you know take a guy out from 12 feet. It's not going to happen that way. All right, it's all you got. I understand, but you're going to have bigger problems. But this is the thing. These laws that say you can't protect yourself until something bad happens to you makes no sense. Hopefully, the Supreme Court, when they release their decision, agrees with the plaintiff on this one and tells New York to go pound sand. But, guys, it's getting scarier and scarier and scarier out there. All right? You know, we all saw what happened with the rioting over Minneapolis or the rioting in uh Kentucky or the rioting down in Texas or the rioting in Seattle or whatever it would be. Imagine that is going on on your front doorstep and these people, mob mentality, get crazy enough and go, hey, you know what? We're going to start throwing torches up on your house or we're going to try to bust into your house or whatever it is. You need to be able to protect yourself, guys, because you don't get a second chance sometimes. Have a good Sunday. Pinball out.